Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Hitman23. Um, video tonight's gonna be my uh, kind of a smorgasbord video. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I got for Christmas from the family. Um, some pickups, some uh, Christmas card that came in the mail, all that good stuff. So first thing I'm gonna show you is this right here from my friend and my homie, Eric Fourleaf. I got his card in the mail today. And he is um, wishing me a warm and Merry Christmas. And um, just a few cards to brighten up your holidays. Fourleaf Eric. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Eric Fourleaf. I greatly appreciate that. This will go proudly in the YouTube um, family collection. So what did Eric send? Um, he sent me this nice little stack of um, looks like some Redskins cards. So we've got here, this is a 1991 Pro Set Art Monk. Nice action shot there of the GOAT. Uh, this is a 2000 Donruss Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson. And I never saw these before, actually. I never saw 2000 Donruss football cards. That's the first time. In the back. And this is a cool one. This is this Upper Deck Clinton Portis rookie debut. Um, he was not a rookie with the Redskins. He was a rookie with the Broncos. And then the Redskins in 2002 traded Champ Bailey to the Broncos straight up for Mr. Portis. And I'm doing a nice little Clinton Portis uh, PC, I guess you would say. So that's a very nice looking card. like that a lot. Very cool. And then a Tops, um, a Clinton Portis Tops card. This is the 05 Tops. Those look cool too. That's the 50th anniversary of Tops football. They came out in 55. Very cool card. And then we got the beautiful um, 1991 action packed Daryl Green with the. Uh, I guess you would say this is embossed, right? It's raised up. It's like textured. Very, very cool card. Love the action pack. I think they're awesome. And then he had to throw me some Donnie Baseball love. He threw me in a 1988 Topps All-Star card. And a 1993 Triple Play. And... Uh, I thank you, sir, very much for the kindness and the holiday cheer. Back at you, my friend. And uh, hope you have a very happy and healthy new year. Thank you, sir. All right, let's get on to Christmas gifts. Um, I guess first thing I'll show is the um, a couple of, I guess, the hits I got out of. I got uh, two, two boxes. I got a archives blaster box for my son Luke and I got a heritage high number hobby box for my lovely wife Elisa so out of the blaster box of archives uh the two you know hits I would say that I got I got this numbered out of 75 Gabriel Moreno green foil board um parallel um I, I can't even keep up with the names of these cards anymore there's so many different permutations and combinations and names of different different styles of parallels I can't I can't keep track and then I got this nice um 1969 1969 top insert um of the team um team history the Aaron Judge nice foily looking card and these are exclusive to blaster boxes so picked up a nice judge for the PC which is very cool and then the rest were just you know binder fodder and uh, and that good stuff the hobby box of um, high number, I was able to put together almost the entire high number series, you know, aside from the, the last 25 cards from, you know, 700 to 725, I got maybe, maybe eight or nine of those. So those are the high number, high numbers, the short print ones. Um, my box topper was, um, I didn't realize they were doing this, but they did the buyback, so... It's the 50th anniversary stamp on the 1974 card, right? Um, I didn't know they were doing that. Again, the buyback cards, but the Mike Torres right there. 
on the uh, 1974 real tops design. And I did get an autograph. Um, was, you know, I like getting autographs. I prefer the autographs over the relics. Um, I got the Starling Marte autograph. So not, not too bad. You know, I would have preferred something I PC'd, but hey, you can't win them all, right? You can't win them all. So that's my kind of hits from that. Like I said, the rest was um, was just, you know, for my set build. And the Heritage, the Heritage cards, the Topps Heritage cards, I allow myself, that is my um, my set now that I hand collate every year. Um, the Topps flagship, I just buy the, the factory set now and... Um, I used to, you know, try to put together Chrome and archives. I just don't, I, I don't do that anymore. It's just too much. Um, I prefer, um, if I, you know, take a little tangent and I know people have been talking a little bit how their, their collecting habits have changed. Um, I've gone away from a lot of the modern purchases of, you know, retail and stuff like that. I allow myself a little bit for fun and, you know, for binder fodder, but I'm really trying to really focus on, you know, singles and more um, more um, vintage stuff and, you know, quirky, weird things and, you know, um, that kind of stuff. So I'm really trying to shift my focus toward that. And um, it's, it's going pretty well so far. It's very fun. So um, that's that. Um, Elisa also, I this is a big surprise, picked me up this. Um, this is out of the uh, 2023 Topps Chrome anniversary or platinum anniversary uh, it's the 1953 design the don manningly numbered out of 25 number 20 out of 25 this is the orange i don't know i call it like an orange camouflage um parallel so that was um that was a big surprise i did not expect that so she definitely surprised me with that and that's really awesome so um i get to kick up my don manningly numbers by one the ticker goes up one um and this is card number six in the in the set so got a nice donnie baseball there with the wada chew in his uh in his in his face so that's that um the boys also got me um luke got me this great um i'm not a huge you know, I'm not a pop collector per se, but there are certain pops I will go after. And one is definitely Boba Fett. So he got me this new new version of Boba Fett. I have a couple of the you know the older versions. Um, I keep these in the box. I don't open them up. But I got my Boba because I'm a big, huge Boba Fett fan. So you got to get the Bobas. And then Evan, I forget where he told me he found this, but I thought it was kind of cool because, you know, he knows I like the Oakland A's and they're kind of like my step team and they're not going to be around that much longer, right? So it's kind of it's kind of going to end, I think. I don't know. I just don't see. We'll see what happens. But he saw this. Where do you see this? I forget he told me where. And um, even though he doesn't play anymore, I thought it was really cool. Evan thought about me, and he saw that it was in Oakland Day. He'd get me the Chris Davis pop. So, again, this will be great once I have my card room and I can do a little my little theme displays about different teams that I like. And this will be perfect right there. Um Still not sure if I'll keep this in the box or if I'll put it up with my bobbleheads or I may keep it in the box with my bobbleheads. I'm not sure yet, but right now it's going to stay in the box. And uh, I really thought that was cool of Evan. And the last two things, two pickups, not Christmas gifts or holiday gifts or tier of any sort, but great cards nonetheless. I to readjust myself in here. Um, as you know, my next player run that I'm working on for, you know, a set registry is Al Oliver. So I picked up probably one of my favorite cards of his, um, definitely in my top three favorite cards. It's the great, um, I think it's a great 1976 Al Oliver got that. Um, I always just thought that card was very, um, it, I, I, I just, it's raw. It's kind of like, it's got an, I don't know. It just looks... There's something about the, the photography on that card just stands out. I and mean, it's not the greatest picture, but I just love it for some reason. It just looks so, like, grainy and, like, just kind of, like, smoky. <laughs> you know, like, if you watch, you know, old wrestling shows from the 70s and you you, know, you see them in the, uh, in the um, 
and the venues that they're wrestling in, it's all smoky and dark. It's got it kind of got that gritty feel to it. That's what that reminds me of. So I love that card. So that gives me, I believe, I believe that gives me my third Al Oliver card in the uh, in the run. I have his rookie, the 69. I have his 71, and now I have his 76. Um, so very cool. And then the last card um, of the night and the last card for me to complete a set registry. Um, this is, not that it's a tough card, it's one of the more higher expense cards uh, for this player. Um, it's the 1967 Veda Pinson. This completes my registry. Um, reasoning why this card's a little more pricey because it, it is a high number. And the high numbers in the 67s are, are pretty tough. Um, but I picked up this beautiful, beautiful example right here. It's, um, I would say that's pretty, pretty dang centered, Dylan. I think it's pretty dang centered, my friend. And it's got sharp corners and... Um, the back is a little, a little off center. Um, uh, but I think the front is pretty centered to me. I mean, if it's not centered, it's like 48, 52. <laughs> um, that's just a gorgeous car. The 67 tops look great. Um, there's the classic, you know, vested Cincinnati Reds uniform. The one that Ted Klazuski so famously wore without the undershirt on this 57 tops card. So very awesome card of a very good player. And um, I plan on doing a tabletop um, with my Veda Pinton run um, in one of my next videos soon. You know, in the next few videos that I do, I'll do one of those. Um, but that's that. In the back, again, I'll show you that. It's really cool to complete a... Um, a player run um it's 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 uh it's an accomplishment it feels good um and it just you know shows you know it, it builds patience it allows you to build some patience because you know it takes some time to put them together and um i always try to find you know when i'm doing my runs um i don't really i mean the grades i don't really care about i don't really even mention the grades you can see them when i show them but I really try to hone in on how the card looks, and I really do. I truly try to buy the uh, the card. Um, and it's a challenge to try to find, you know, lesser grade cards because, hey, man, we want to pay the least amount for the card we 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 uh, we want, right? I don't have to pay top dollar to have, like, you know, a high-grade card. As long as it appeals to my eyes and it looks good to me, hey, man, that's, that's, all, that's all that matters, you know? I picked up his... You know, for example, his 66 tops that I have, it's a four. But if you look at it, it does not look like a four at all. I mean, it's a really sharp card. And, and I love being able to hunt those down and be like, oh, that, that one looks like it snuck through. Maybe it's a little undergraded, undergraded, whatever, you know, whatever. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just another aspect of the hobby. I never thought I'd get into it. I never thought I'd, I'd be uh, doing, um, you know, set registries. But there's something fun about it. I really enjoy it. And um, I really do like the way the cards look in the slabs. Um, again, it's not a big percentage of my collection. I still buy much more ungraded than graded. Um, and I kind of target the um, the graded cards I do purchase. I don't purchase just to purchase because, you know, it, it's some quirky thing. I really focus. That's the one thing I do focus on is, uh, is, is are my slab cards. Um, and, uh, I want to try to get all different types of slabs too. I want to try to do, you know, I'll, uh, my OCD will kick in and, um, allow me to, or not allow me to, but, or drive me to, if I start a player run on a certain slab, I want to complete that player run in that slab. So my example will be Joe Theismann. I'm doing an SGC run of his. So, um, I'd like to do, you know, look at some CGCs and whatever else and just, I don't know, have fun with it. That's really all I, I really want to do. Um, but again, not a big part of my collecting. Um, I will definitely buy random ungraded cards all the time. If it strikes my fancy, I will buy one. But um, the graded stuff, I really keep pretty focused to to things I'm I'm uh, really uh, focusing on. I mean, right? <laughs> hey, it makes sense. Or it doesn't make sense. I don't know. But that's it, guys. Um, I'm going to go. 
And just want to make sure I let everybody know to be careful this coming weekend, New Year's Eve and the New Year's holiday. Um, just be careful out there. Enjoy your time. Um, don't get too drunk, but hey, have fun anyway. And uh, I'll catch you at the next video. May the cardboard God shine down upon each and every one of you. And I will catch you soon. Peace. Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you, Mr. Eric Fourleaf. I appreciate you, my man. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, 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 Vade is going to take us out tonight since, yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, peace.